Hi, thanks. My name is Joe, and I'm going to show you how to set up a Python environment. Share my screen. So the easiest way to set up a Python environment is to run it off of someone else's server. And we can do that by typing in collab.research.google.com. And then we just click on welcome to collaboratory. So collaboratory runs um, Python notebooks um, and the start page gives you some quick information. Um, you can run in an interactive uh, Python window. Um, it has data science applications, um, machine learning. I, I could spend the whole video just on Collab, but this is just a quick intro to show that you can run Python uh, without installing anything. Now this is running over an internet connection. Um, so to run locally, we need to install, uh, install it locally. Now, <clears throat> I recommend installing Anaconda. It's a package manager. It's one of the more popular ones. So if you just type in anda.com, slash product slash individual. Well, let's just keep it easy and type in anaconda.com. This is our get started page. And the anaconda products that we want is the individual edition. So here we go under products individual edition. That's what we want. And then you just download the installation wizard and it'll install for whatever system you're running. Now I've already done that and I'm on a Windows machine. So let's uh, here, uh, let's start a, a prompt. So typing in Anaconda and well, here, let me show you the navigator. It's one of the nice features of, of Anaconda. It takes a little bit to launch. And this is a live demo, so there may be some pauses as we work through this. So our GUI is launching. Okay. Accidentally started it a couple times. Okay, so I'll update later. Okay, so this is Anaconda Navigator. And these are essentially applications that you can run from within Anaconda. 
Jupyter Lab uh, is an interactive Python pro programming environment, which I, I like it because you can uh, type in the code, execute it, um, see the result, and it, it's it's helpful to see what your code will do. Um, Spider is used a lot for scientific development, and uh, it's basically an uh, integrated development environment. Um, RStudio, um, R is a language used for statistics, and so you'll see that in data science as well. So all of this, you know, it's um, just shows you how integrated Anaconda, di Anaconda is. So that's something that you can explore on your own. So Navigator supports um, adding environments. And you can do this from the command line as well. Um, but from within the GUI, you click on environments and then create. And then it'll create an environment for you like this. So I've started a tutorial environment. really wants me to update. So there may be some pauses as it's running. Um, so we'll just give it a minute. So there are a lot of packages available um, on the Anaconda. Um, but the other uh, popular package manager is um, PIP, and it's uh, hosted by PyPy, um, PYPI. So Anaconda comes with the PIP version. Um, and so what this does is makes more programs available to you. Um, let's take a look at uh, Anaconda. Let's see. Put together a cheat sheet that I'll share after the video. Um, OK, yeah, pip installing packages. Let's um, go to this page. So down here, there's a nice no, different page. Oh, yeah, this one here. OK, so both Conda and PIP are repositories, um, package managers. The key difference is, is that Conda um, has binaries. So these are executable files. Um, you don't need any compilers. It supports many package types. That's why we saw our studio is being available. Um, you can create environments from within Conda. Um, it checks for dependencies. So it's doing a lot of the maintenance things behind the scenes that make sure that your um, Python programs uh, will run with, without problems. So pip has source code. So that means you need compilers. Um, it, it only supports Python. Um, and you have to set up your virtual environment separately um, from the command line, essentially. So 
for the less experienced user, Conda is a little bit easier to work with. Um, PIP has 150,000 programs available on it. So at some point, uh, you may run into a situation where you need to install something from PIP. Um, and so I wanted to show an example. So on, on GitHub, there's a package called QuantStats, and this is for um, analyzing uh, stock data. So scrolling down to the bottom, you can download the GitHub repository, but to install it within your Python environment, so we can install from pip, and it also gives instructions for installing from conda. I tried conda, it didn't work for me, so I went ahead and installed from pip. Um, and that's kind of the use case that I ran into where I needed to use pip. <clears throat> it was getting these packages that are um, developed by, um, you know, individual developers, they, they made something cool and they just want to make it available. So let's go back to Anaconda and see if we've started our Okay. Let's try running it again. Let's open a terminal. Okay, so we have our terminal open. This shows us that we're in our tutorial environment. And I'm going to show. So this, this GitHub re repo. Um, kind of shows you a quick start and uh, short code just to uh, get you started on it. Um, so anyway, we've got our environment set up. Um, environments gives us basically isolated places to install projects. Um, so that they don't conflict with other parts of our system and other projects. And uh, we talked about how Anaconda has binaries or exec executable programs, so you don't need compilers. And PIP has source code. Um, it has such a large number of programs available that you may at some point find yourself needing to download the programs from from pip to support your projects so and if you don't want to mess with any of that you can run off of a server like collab and uh, work within the python directly itself so here's collab collab.research.google.com And this is Anaconda running locally. So I hope you find this, uh, hope you learned something and uh, can help you decide how you want to run Python and, and how you want to organize your own projects. So thanks and uh, I'll see you next time.